Praise God, he kept me. Amen. And I'm going to play again sometime and do it all over again. You know, one of the things about adversity and about challenges is knowing when not to give up. Right. You know, you have to know when not to give up. Some things is inevitable. You have to say enough is enough and leave it alone. But there are times when, in spite of all of your efforts, in spite of everything, you just have to leave it alone. But then there's those times when no matter how much you're pushed, there's this need to keep trying over and over again. Most people that have tried inventing things try over and over and over again. You plan learning how to play a saxophone and you miss a note in your learning and you can't just give up. You got to keep trying over and over again. So one day when your kids or your grandkids or whoever say, how did you learn how to do this? Say, I kept doing it all over again. And uh, that's the title of today's message, all over again. Now, I, I, I was looking at this, and it is amazing how you can look at Scripture maybe a hundred times and you always get something out of it. But I know you, you but uh, the title of the message is really Jesus all over again. Somebody say all over again. All over again. Now say Jesus, Jesus. All, over again. all over again. Amen. One of the things about being a saint and being given a calling to preach or teach this and to be a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ is you'll find great opposition. You'll find those that think that they can thwart what God is proclaimed he is able to do and willing and has decided to do in you and we're not alone in this this is old stuff will you turn with me a little for just for a while I'm not going to keep you too long but go to Acts chapter 4 and I want to take you through this because this is an amazing series of events every time Peter tried to do something right for Jesus. Seemed like he got in trouble. You remember that? Seemed like every time he tried. But Jesus latched on until Peter, and he'd have to tell Peter all over again. You remember? Until Jesus became an all over again for Peter. Y'all there? Yes, sir. Verse 5. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no another name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. You may be seated. Preach, preach, yeah. Yes, sir. There's this, this, this whole episode is an amazing uh, uh, story. It's an amazing series of events. But we love to talk about the man at the gate called Beautiful. Uh, right. And this is the guy they're talking about. Because if, you, if you'll think about it, not too long ago, they got the Holy Ghost poured out on them in the upper room. Now, if you'll look closely, it names who was present to see this healing. The gate called Beautiful, Beautiful was located at the temple. And so when they got to the temple, they see this lame man. And, the, you know, the big shots going to want to see what's happening so they can make accuse and, and accusation so they could point a finger and say, see, see there, they wrong. See, they, I thought they had this, and I thought they this. That's why the big shots were there. You know, the real brilliant people that know everything. And so when they saw this, 
They couldn't make sense out of it. So guess who was there? The same people that they took Jesus to. That's why he said you were supposed to be the builders. But you threw away the chief cornerstone. Because guess who was there? Annas, Caiaphas, and those that were kin, family members of the high priest, they were there. That's what he said right there. But now if you remember, let's go back a little bit. You remember when they took Jesus from the garden? And they took him to guess who? Annas, Caiaphas, and the other priests. So the same folk that, that, that accused our Christ and sent them to Calvary Hill was watching this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But wasn't Peter the one that said he didn't know it? Uh, there was something about Peter that has to give a person pause and say, what was this about? But that's just the beginning of the story. Because he had to do Jesus all over again. See, he blew it when he first was outside the temple. And he was warming himself. You remember that? And they said, weren't you with him? And he said, no, <laughs> that wasn't me. But didn't I see you with him? I know you want him. No, I told you, woman, that wasn't me. I know you were one. Look, and he done went all ghetto on him. And then we moved to the point where Jesus has risen. And he's got to do Jesus all over again. Because uh, Jesus is there and he's going up on a cloud and Peter's there. They're in the upper room tarrying and waiting for the promise to be made, to be fulfilled. And Peter was there. Uh, he was waiting to do Jesus all over again. He didn't quit. He didn't give up himself. Forget this, man. Dude is dead. and I have no hope. They accusing me. They mess around and want to kill me. But for some reason, he found himself at the gate called Beautiful at the temple. He and John, they look and they see a man that is impotent from birth. You remember, he, Jesus went to the pool. Uh, he, he went to the pool and, and uh, Bethsaida, I believe it was, and, and he saw the lame and impotent, impotent man at the, at, uh, on the porch, Solomon's porch, and he was impotent by the waters. And it yeah. was said that an angel would come down and trouble the waters. Y'all remember the story? Yeah. Peter probably had a flashback in that moment. <laughs> uh, and, and he fell, found himself in a place where he could do Jesus all over again. See, what, what we're called to do is Jesus all over again. You know, if we're going to live this life, we've got to walk this life. Yes, we got to live it just like Jesus lived it. So, Peter, you remember when Jesus said, he said, why are you, why are you late right here? Why, what's the problem? He said, nobody's here to put me in the water. Right. Huh? And then the man was begging for alms from Peter and John. He said, look, gold have we not. He said, but that which we have, huh. give we unto you. Yes, sir. He took his right hand, he said, rise. He said, and walk. The man rose up, and Peter took his hand, and he strengthened him in his legs, and the man leaped. He was doing Jesus all over again. I'm going to take my time. So when we look at these scriptures, and we remember what's, what's happened, and now the, the story is being retold in a different way, in a different way, even though you can't see Jesus right now, uh, we're seeing the power of Jesus yes. all over again. Yes. Um, there's this understanding that people want to want they want to talk about Peter a little bit, you know, and and the big shots, you know, they sit around and gather, you know, what can we do to thwart this thing? Mm -hmm. Look at me again. I'm gonna take you a little further. Verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, yeah. they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant and men. They marveled and they looked. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. It's something about being with Jesus that, that sets you apart. And, and you know, Peter, they, they perceived that Peter was a dumb fisherman. John didn't know much either. So how in the world could this man be an impotent from birth, and yet these two vagabonds, these two do-nothing-nobodies, walk right up to him at your shop 
You've been in there for a long time, Annas. You've been in there for a while, Caiaphas. You, you've been privy to all this stuff. Now, why is it that a vagabond come by, a fisherman, an, un, an ignorant man can use the right name all over again? Uh, he, he, he spoke to him. He says, what is this thing? He said, beholding the man which was healed, standing with them. Now, notice he was standing with them. They could say nothing against it. I'm going to tell you what you can do with the, against the truth. Absolutely zero. No matter how, I was telling my class this morning, I said, because I've heard so much people about tithes and offering, and people have been so brilliantly, you know, telling me how stupid I am. Because I don't understand tithing. And I have a very deep and spiritual knowledge because it's given by God. Amen. So what I did was, I took the time out the other night, I said, you know what, I'm going to review some stuff. So I went on YouTube, you know, the popular classroom of America. And I asked YouTube a question. And this is what I said. I said, YouTube, can you please show me all of the reasons why Christians should tithe today, scripturally? And not to my surprise, over a hundred and something sites came up, all of which had reasons not to tithe. Not to tithe. So I took my time, and I do that when I don't have nothing to do. And I actually looked at it, and I thought I was going to hear some brilliant breakthrough from some knowledgeable people. And so I listened very sincerely. And I shook my head. I said, this person's wrong. This person's wrong. Oh, they're so wrong. She's wrong. She's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. How is it that all of these knowledgeable people, knowledgeable Wise people, holy people, don't know how to use the scriptures. Miss all kinds of stuff. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I said, boy, I need to sit all them folk down and talk to them <laughs> with their Bibles. Right, right, right. And show them how much. See, that's what happens when you think you know something it, and you don't let God show you something. Come on, preacher. Come on. There's a difference when God shows you. And when men think they know something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I could have walled them out. If I took one at a time and said, you wrong? Here, let me show you. They would have all walked out doing like this. Because they would have said, he did Jesus all over again. Amen. He did Jesus all over again. All I could do was praise God in my back room. I said, Lord. That's, and I was sad, though. Because there's so many people being duped. Because instead of seeking God for themselves, hiding in his will. Getting serious with God, not trying to look for a feeble excuse not to obey him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not trying, and not, not, that wasn't all of it, but some of them genuinely thought they were right. They really did, and I thought, I, and for a minute I'm like, come on, say this, say this. And they, how can you, you can't do that. That's like starting your car without a battery. <laughs> how you going to start your car without a battery? How you going to roll down the block in your car and you ain't got no wheels? How you going to do it? It ain't going to work. And that's what I saw a lot of. So when you have people that want to call you ignorant and accuse you of being greedy and all that, then you have to take inventory. Because when I look at and I pray and I call upon God, the same God that called me years ago is still with me. Amen. And he let me do Jesus. I knew y'all would get it in a minute. <laughs> he let me do Jesus when? Uh-huh. See, so what they did here, say, but when they commanded them to go outside of the council, they conferred among themselves. Now, these same devils that crucified Jesus, they in conference now about a miracle that they can't deny. Right. And like I told the brothers of church, you, you ever find beer in my, in my trash can, beer cans? I picked them up off the street. You ain't never smelled me smell like weed. I ain't never bought a hoe. I'm not a gluttonous. I don't lie. I'm faithful on my job. I'm faithful to my God. I ain't never cheated, cheated on. Where my woman at? She, she in here. Ask her. Huh? But, but see, when you confer among yourselves with people that think they know something and they don't, you end up knowing exactly what they know, which is nothing. You know just enough to hurt yourself or to be dangerous. But instead of humbling yourself by the evidence presented and by the power of God demonstrated, 
They saw the evidence. They want you to shut up. They want you to backtrack and take away what you know God has shown you. Uh -huh. You know how I know? I got evidence. He said, saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny. They even admit it they can't deny it. They said, we can't deny it. I've seen things I know I can't deny. Where is he at? He, he was running around here earlier, didn't want to speak to Brother Johnson. Mustard, where he at? I can't deny with God. I have a slew of them. I've seen many things in my day. So here you have. Now listen to this, because we got I gotta take my time with this. God gave me some good stuff for y'all. He said, but that is spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. What other people would rather do is lie on me. They just lie, twist truth, lie. They won't confess what they've done, but they'll just lie. Just lie, and he didn't want to help me, and he took this, and he never did this, and he never did. So, wait a minute. I'm calling upon the name of Jesus uh, all over again. I'm leading God's people all over again. I ain't never stood up and auctioned for anybody's money. Oh, we need five people to give $50. We need 25 people to give $30. Oh, I ain't never done that. I ain't never. But, but you'd rather go to a church where they got Peter Cottontail. Easter bunnies. Yeah. They want to strip you of your finances right. and don't teach you how to gain finances. On, I encourage entrepreneurship in this church. Yeah. Yeah. I encourage people to be faithful to the Most High God. Right. Yeah. I have never begged for anything from either one of you. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I ain't never stole from either one of you. That's right. Amen. Amen. But see, this is what they're doing. They're trying to figure out how can we bring them down? How can we stop this Jesus? Now, Jesus, they thought they stopped him. Right. Now, here's the, here, there's something they thought they stopped him already. I thought we stopped him. We killed him. Didn't we stop him? Yeah. Uh, but Peter just got through saying, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Right. Huh? So you got to learn how to do Jesus. All over again. When you was a little kid and you was going to your Catholic church or your Baptist church or your Pente Pentecostal church or your Jehovah Kingdom Hall or whatever, or you was going to the church of the first gang member on 2nd Street, or whatever church you was going to, you were learning some things. You thought you had it figured out because you was with the fellas in the hood. You had some street cred. Or you was just so soft and, and people didn't even know you was really male. Or you was so hard people couldn't tell you was really a woman. Uh, and that's okay. We all been been down the uh, Sin Street, on, Abomination Boulevard. Right. We all been down there, huh? And we lived and we wallowed in our pig pen, huh? But but then sometimes we have to listen and wait to hear Jesus whisper to us, so that we could be encouraged to do Jesus all over again. So here they're saying. This he said, and they called them and commanded them not to speak henceforth to no man in his name. Don't you talk about Jesus no more. They, they want you to talk about astrophysics right. and, and mysticism. On, they want you to talk about the likes of the Holy One, T.D. Jakes. And they want you to talk about the Holy Ones that have boyfriends in their closets. On, and, and the Holy Ones that that get that that buy take your money and buy their jets with. They want you to talk about they don't want you to talk about Jesus unless it's going to benefit them and strip you of your livelihood. <laughs> I don't know about you but when God presents evidence of his generosity and his ability to provide for you, that ought to give you impetus to stay in league with Jesus. And if you seem to go a little bit astray, you can go ahead and get on your knees, repent and do Jesus. Oh, somebody help me here today. Uh, when, when I look at this, and you know, it's the same ones that killed him. Pilate, Pilate, Peter even testified. He said, Pilate tried not to kill him, but you wouldn't have it. You wanted him dead. This is the same Christ that you murdered. You know that made him mad. You know, folk get mad when you tell them on your own mistakes. Yeah, I, I got I, I, Yeah, they want to look at you cross-eyed and then lie and tell you what you saw. Yeah. Now, you didn't see me look at you like that. Yeah, I did, you devil. Oh. Repent. Man, get man. right. Yeah. Huh, humble yourself. Mm. Get mad, grit your teeth, or you can get on your knees and do Jesus all over again. Right. 
Uh, and, and let me tell you something. When you do Jesus all over again, he'll all over make you. He'll give you the best makeover you ever thought you could. He can do some things with you. Oh, I got it. I'm trying to help you. Huh? See, so, so, so when you look at those that were present in verse 6, and then you see how bold they were in verse 13. And then you see how they don't want them to mention Jesus in verse 18. And then they give them the thing. So you want us to buy what you say. Let's look at verse 18. I'm trying to take my time. Huh? He, verse, he said, uh, uh, verse, look, look at verse, eight, uh, verse 19. He said, but Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. Now, they, they put them in, they hit them in the church pew, didn't they? They said, look, we're going to hit you where you're sitting. Which is better for us to do since you're so holy? Is it, is it better for us to obey you as a man or to obey God? What does your judgment tell you?